What should gravel suspension look like? If you ask Specialized, the answer is this, the new Diverge STR, which stands for Suspend the Rider. You're probably familiar with the Future Shock, the 20 millimeter front suspension system, which features on the current Roubaix Endurance road bike and the current Diverge gravel bike. The big news here, of course, is the rear Future Shock. This crazy contraption, which offers 30 millimeters of travel in a mostly rearward direction at the saddle. I just got this test bike a few days ago and have done a few test rides on it, including one this afternoon with Stuart Thompson, the man at Specialized who led the development of this bike. I wanna tell you about the bike itself, what's going on here in particular with the adjustable uh, settings on the rear suspension. I wanna tell you about the models which start with this $14,000 S-Works model and go down from there. And of course, I wanna tell you how it feels to ride this thing, but first, Help me out here. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos from me pop up. Let's start broad with the context here. Gravel has already divided into a few different subcategories. On one fast end, you've got fast gravel, and specialized for that category has the Crux, a 15 pound super slim down gravel race bike. The Diverge is more on the other end of the spectrum of what we're now calling adventure gravel. Of course, you can race adventure gravel bikes too, and you can have a fast gravel bike and, and never race it, but those are like the two broad categories that we now see on the market. The previous model you know, has had that you know, 20 mil Future Shock, which started out as a metal spring. Now it's you know, advanced to a hydraulic model. I had one of the original divergers that had the metal spring. I quite liked it. You know, used the bike uh, quite a bit for gravel, certainly. Even did a 12-hour relay mountain bike race with some friends on that bike. That was a hoot. And then at the rear, the bike had up to 20 mil of give in the seat post. Specialized was saying that's about, you know, twice the movement of a normal carbon post. Personally, I'm a fan of a long carbon post on a gravel bike in that that seems to me to be the good balance of comfort with a bit of give, but without adding a lot of weight or complexity. So a suspension seat post, yes, adds comfort, but it does add weight, add some complexity. And one thing I don't like about those posts is it changes the distance between your saddle and the bottom bracket. So as you're pedaling, you know, you're getting like a bit of a bob effect. To me, that just feels weird. And if it's, on, if it's rough, I'll often just stand up over the rough bits. So all that to say, that's, that's my bias for what a great gravel bike should be, is something with a bit of give in a post without too much complexity. So why can't you just have a carbon post with just more give without all this added complexity? I asked Stu, here's what he had to say about that. Once we get a lot more compliance out of a system, which we've done here, you need to control that compliance. If you get, you get a lot of potential energy stored in the system and the rebound of uh, after hitting a bump is often worse than the actual basically bump or thing that you hit in the first place. So this is the damper that lives in the top tube on the Diverge STR, and it is a really integral part of the rear future shock system. The frame post in the bike is the spring, and this controls the damping and the movement of that spring. So right here is a lever that controls the compression adjustment on the, uh, on the future shock. And there are three positions for this guy. In the open position on the left, you're gonna have less compression damping and the frame post will be allowed to move backwards a lot easier. As you flip it to the middle or even the closed setting, the damping is a lot more uh, firm and it takes a lot more effort to move the, uh, the, the shaft on the damper. Another example of rear suspension for gravel is the SRAM axis dropper post. Now it's not advertised necessarily as a suspension post, but if you drop it down just a little bit, then it does give you some cushion while pedaling. For me, this is kind of weird for a couple of reasons. One, you have to drop it a little bit in order for that to uh, kick in, which isn't ideal. And second, you're, you're getting that bob effect of constantly changing the distance between the bottom bracket and the saddle, which is 
less than ideal. Another thing Specialized has done with the frame is keep the main frame all in one piece. So in addition to the saddle to bottom bracket remaining the same for pedaling efficiency, you've got something similar going in the rear and that there's no uh, compression interrupting your power between the cranks and the rear wheel. Similarly, when you're up out of the saddle, uh, there is no give because this flexing post is taken out of the equation. Yes, there is certainly movement up front here, which is quite visible. Uh, to my taste, that still feels pretty good. And since it doesn't twist the way, say, like the uh, BMC URS stem does, where your, your wrists rotate downwards, this keeps it all in the same orientation as it's bobbing up and down. So you get that bob to a small degree when out of the saddle, but uh, no bob in the rear. So in many ways, this bike is similar to this bike, the Trek Checkpoint, which has you know one long post, the seat mass down to the seat tube, which pivots on what Trek calls the ISO speed decoupler. In effect, you just get a long flexing post here, moving generally in the backward direction, but keeping the same rough distance between the saddle and the bottom bracket. With this added functionality comes added weight. The Trek Checkpoint is about 19 and a half pounds, Specialized claims this S-Works bike in a size 56 is 8.5 kilos, you know, or roughly, you know, 18.7 pounds. I weighed this particular bike at 8.67 kilos, so, you know, 19.1 pounds. So certainly nowhere close to the Crux, which is just over 15 pounds, but they're two different bikes trying to do two different things. So let's get into the, the guts of this, the meat and bones and tendon. There are three compression settings from wide open to firm, not fully locked out, much like the front. You can just go from firm to wide open, three different settings. Inside is the hydraulic damper and at the tip is a bolt that controls the rebound, how quickly the seat post and what Specialized calls the frame post moves back. Most people I suspect will not be fiddling with that rebound adjustment much if at all, but that is an adjustable setting. The compression setting, I suspect people will be filling with as they're riding along. That is connected to the frame post by what Specialized calls the tendon. It is in some ways curious that this is left out and visible instead of covered with a rubber shroud the way, say, the front end is. One thing Specialized likes to do is have a visual differentiator. You remember the zerts, you know, the little the jiggly rubber bits that were put on the fork in the frame. You know, a, <laughs> a common joke about those when someone would ask, well, what does that do? The response was, well, it sells bikes because when you're in a bike shop, the shop staff can point to that as a feature. So this is certainly something you can point to. Will we see this covered up in the future? Perhaps, but in any event, Specialized calls this the tendon. To show how much the seat post and frame post move without this, Stu, undid the tendons main joint for me and sure enough this thing does move around quite a bit another thing that is adjustable is the frame post specialized has a total of nine of these two are reserved for the smallest size the other seven are interchangeable amongst the rest each of which has a certain amount of carbon flex built in in two ways this post for instance uh, is labeled 50 and 58 and if you turn the post 90 degrees, uh, it changes from one setting to the other. So you've got two settings built into the frame post, and then you can mix uh, around different frame posts there. That's something presumably you would set up with your local specialized shop to get the amount of frame flex that you want. Okay, so the million dollar question, or in this case, the 14, thousand dollar question what does it feel like to ride it feels a number of ways some of them positive some of them strange an interesting thing for me when I test bikes that are well outside the box is it's often difficult to initially tease out what is different and weird and a negative thing from what is different and just an unfamiliar thing so I will reserve full judgment until I've had time to ride the bike race the bike such as at Big Sugar this weekend however here are my first impressions. Let's start on the front end. The future shock, as I said before, I think is generally a positive thing. If you want a bit of cush, 
this is a good way to achieve that. Being able to tune the firmness as you go is a positive thing and it doesn't rotate your wrist at all. It's just a nice smooth up and down motion. The rear, however, is a bit more of a mixed bag. I found myself using the first two, the firmer two settings most of the time. Of course, I ran it wide open for a bit to see how that felt, but it often felt weird. There's just a little too much movement, not just fore aft, but in terms of the saddle tipping up and down. Even just pedaling, JRA, just riding along on the road, you know, you can feel the saddle uh, tilting up and down. Stu at Specialized says they recommend people, you know, adjust their saddle a bit the way you would on a mountain bike to account for sag in that since the saddle is going to go back a bit when loaded, that you should scoot your saddle up a bit and also tilt the nose down slightly so that when you sit down and the saddle tips back, you're sort of back to neutral. Be that as it may, there's still, as I said, a fair amount of movement while riding. Over the long haul, will that translate to something that just fades away and feels comfortable or that continue to feel weird? I'll report back in a bit, but that is my uh, initial take on the matter. It is cool that you can adjust the rebound. However, I didn't fiddle with that as I felt the stock setting uh, felt perfectly good as far as how quick the frame post seat post came back into position. As a chunkier gravel bike, this comes with 42 mil Tracer Pros, uh, which feel to my taste a bit more supple than the very popular Pathfinder. Stu says the rolling resistance is the same as the Pathfinder, plus you got a bit more grip. Maybe not quite the same puncture protection. We'll see how these tires fare at Big Sugar. The tire clearance on this bike is up to 47 mil, so plenty of clearance there. The top model comes with a quirk power meter, as all top models should, in my humble opinion. Now let me give you the rundown on spec for this bike and the others. I've got my notes here just because this information was just passed over to me and I do not have this memorized. All the bikes come in six sizes from 49 to 61. This top S-Works model, as I mentioned, is a cool $14,000. In uh, euros, that's 15,000. And in the UK, that would be 13,000 GBP. Bike comes with a mix of red ETEP Axis and the XX1 Eagle rear derailleur and cassette, the 1050 for that 500% gear range. Uh, the bike has a 40 tooth chain ring. I like running a 42 just to have uh, a little bit more gear, but not uh, something that is still overwhelming to pedal up. We'll see how that goes at Big Sugar. The Wheels are specialized top end Roval Terra CLX, which have a 25 mil internal ceramic bearings, all the bells and whistles. It's a 32 mil depth on these guys. The bike, as I mentioned, comes with a quirk power meter and specialized mirror, the 3D printed power saddle, which is quite comfy. Then you've got two other models. You've got the Pro for 9,000 US, 9.5 Euro, 9,000 GBP and the Expert, which is 7,500 US, 9.5 Euro, and 9K GBP. The Pro has a Force ETAP Axis with an X01 Eagle derailleur and that 1050 cassette. The wheels are Roval Terra CL, the second tier, still with a 32 mil depth and 25 mil internal. The $7,500 Expert model gets a mix of rival ETAP Axis with NX Eagle derailleur and an 1150 cassette. Wheels are the Terra C, you get a Power Expert saddle, and of course the Future Shock front and rear. So, what questions do you have about this Diverge STR and the rear Future Shock? Leave those in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them either in the comments there or in a video done post. Big Sugar after I've ridden this thing 100 miles there and got some more time to decide whether this whole configuration is a good thing or a little too much of a good thing. In any event, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.